So first, um, we have a lot to talk about. You know, we want to talk about International TikTok Day, obviously. But before we get there, I want to try to get to know you guys a little better and let sure. the audience get to know you guys better. So my first question is, uh, what's the one game that really got you into tabletop gaming? I basically started with Dungeons and Dragons when I was in, uh, I was like seven, seven years old, so something like that. But that didn't really spark the interest in me as far as tabletop gaming until probably Puerto Rico. I played a lot of board games until then, but at that point, that's when I realized, oh, I have it in me, and I'm a gamer for life. In around 1989, I played a Steve Jackson game called Car Wars, and it was the first time a game uh, let me combine uh, the, the part of my brain that does strategy with the part of my brain that makes stuff up. And how great would it be, world, if there were uh, a, 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 a smartphone uh, uh, or tablet version of Car Wars where you move the pieces around the way we move the pieces around in the uh, like smartphone version of Small World. This is a thing that needs to happen. Mine goes back a lot farther because I'm old. Um, beating my little brother up in Stratego uh, when we were young was I, we. We were both, uh, he was a year younger, we played it endlessly, constantly, and occasionally I'd have to let him win, so they'd keep playing with me over and over again, so I'm kind of a bully, I guess, in that way. So why is tabletop gaming doing so well in your eyes? I think that we are standing on the shoulders of the poker room uh, that brought people together in their houses once a week for a game. And as the like craze of sitting down to play poker tournaments sort of faded, uh, there was still that desire to get together and do something. When we created Tabletop, one of my goals was to create something that would let gamers show their non-gaming friends and partners, this is why we get together and spend an entire day on Saturday and play seven games or one game of Eclipse. We are social beings, and so we get so tied up in our electronic world of texting people who are sitting, you know, five feet away from us. It's like, this is an excuse to actually interact with people. And it goes back to, I, I watched my parents, they had pinochle parties back in the 60s and 70s, where it was an excuse to have 20 people over, sit around, drink and play cards and have fun. And I liken that to this you know, renaissance of, of tabletop playing to kind of the same idea. It's a reason to get together and have fun. So with tabletop we created this, we, we lit the fire in the, in the new fan. They didn't really have a place to find other fans. Right? So the idea with Tabletop Day was to essentially create some sort of infrastructure to empower the fans so they can find each other and play. But specifically in the community centers, in the hobby retail stores. And so for Tabletop Day, we have exclusive items they can only find here. So that's part of it. We're, we're basically driving traffic into the stores. People can list their stores for free. They can list their events. And it's a very easy way for them to compete with online stores because online stores obviously don't have a community center. They can't work build a community, whereas like a real brick and mortar store. What do you guys see the tabletop gaming business going in five years? Like, what's what's life going to be like five years from now? The only thing I think is that the ability to crowdfund projects is going to let smaller developers who wouldn't necessarily have a chance to get uh, a, a meeting with an established publisher, an opportunity to publish, much in the same way that blogging and self-publishing allowed writers to do that uh, 10 and gosh now almost 20 years ago. But I bet you have a lot more to say about that than I do. Well, I could, I could say I think there's actually in some cases too many games for people to choose right now. Yeah. And I know the retailers I talked to said, I, I can't bring all these games in. They're, so adding more from you know, crowdfunding causes more complications, but there are a few that rise to the top. Part of the reason these games stay forever is because they're playing with kids and the kids play with their kids and it's like this generation, right? And so when people come in, they say, oh, I love Scrabble, I say, let's play Banana Grabs. They love, oh, I love Monopoly, let's play Settlers of Catan, right? And so I'm trying to convert people to the new games because I think they're really just, it's never been better, guys, honestly. Like, the game designs and the production value in all these games are so good and it's a global market, like, the best designers all around the world, the best, like, access you can ever get with the internet. Um, it's wonderful, and I think it's just great for the next generation because I'm waiting for like 12 years from now when like these kids are like making games of their own and they're, they've been exposed to every best possible game in the world. I mean, it's going to be amazing. Why is the hobby important to promote, especially through International Tabletop? Like, why 
like what does that day do for the hobby and yeah. what does it do for you guys? We have worked real hard to build an infrastructure to make it easy for people uh, wherever they are to plan an event, to join an event, and hopefully to uh, plant the seeds that eventually grow into a regular game group. The longest friendships in my life are the ones that I formed uh, when I was playing tabletop games when I was a freshman in high school. And a couple of my friends from my game group are here today. And if I'm like, hey guys, I'm having a barbecue, nobody shows up. Hey guys, I'm gonna play games, everybody comes. And International Tabletop Day just sort of takes that game day idea and it sort of formalizes it um, uh, on a slightly larger scale. It could be your barbecue recipe is no good. Wow, really? No. In front of everybody? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. You burn it's one steak. Right. <laughs> they don't call me Seamus the Bridge Builder. <laughs> what have you witnessed that made you say, we have to do number two, and what are some of your plans to make number two better than number one? I just want to make a bunch of poop jokes now. That right. Yeah. Say number two. <laughs> um, uh, the thing for me, the, the thing that really, like, I woke up the morning of Tabletop Day last year, about two hours after my wife had gotten up and she had her laptop open in our kitchen and was watching Felicia and everybody else play games and she Anne came in and told me this is this is so great they're having so much fun the game looks great people are like uh, Skyping in from all over the world this is so awesome and until I saw that firsthand it was still kind of an abstract concept in my head. And when I came out uh, and, and stood in the, in the, the kitchen and, and watched that, uh, it felt so good and so exciting to me. We had participants on every continent, including Antarctica. We nearly had, an, had something on the space station. Yeah, they, um, they changed the, the international rules so we couldn't get it up there. Yeah. Time. <laughs> but um, they were, we were this close to being... We were this close to being intergalactic tabletop day. <laughs> For me, it's seeing the little stars and meeples appear on the map, like every day going in and like approving events. It, it's all hand coded, all of it. It's all hand approved, and and so going through and seeing the events just like worldwide, and knowing that there's some kid in New Zealand that's getting into tabletop gaming because of, because of tabletop day. It's awesome. What's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you guys during filming? Probably the most surprising thing to me, which I think is hilarious, and people have tried to scandalize me with this, but it, it, it doesn't work, is uh, uh, so, uh, a couple of them, I have a, a friend uh, who works in the adult film industry, and uh, she texted me and she said, hey, I worked on your loser's couch today. And I went, what? And she said, yeah, I had sex on your loser's couch today. And I was like, that's awesome. Did you steam clean it when you were done? <laughs> Um, and it brought this extra layer of hilarity to me. And then I didn't talk about it with anyone really. About three months after she told me that, a post appeared on the front page of Reddit that said something like, hey Will Wheaton, what's going on on your loser's couch? And it was uh, uh, a couple of adult fil film performers working on, on, the, on the couch. But I, the best part is you transformed it. Like they were trying to come at you, trolls came after you and you're like, Great, hashtag tabletopless games. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. And then and we just made a whole bunch of trending. Trend. We trended tabletopless games, which yeah. was just making like we just took tabletop board games and gave them dirty names. Yeah. And it, um, it, it, and it was instantly, hilarious. Instantly transformed and people loved it. Did you guys have anything uh, special planned for 2014? For, for tabletop. We're working on making tabletop season three happen right now. And uh, uh, if we are able to secure funding to make the show happen, um, we have some really exciting ideas. Um, I want to bring back some players that I really love that were just really fun. I would love to bring back a group of uh, champion players and, and have, you know, have them come back again. I would love to do uh, an episode that features games specifically for kids. Uh, with kids playing those games, and uh, I would really love to somehow create a spin-off show that is a, a role-playing game, where instead of it being a one-shot, we actually play an entire season-long campaign with characters leveling up and and uh, like a full story uh, arc. and like do it playing a yeah playing through a full story arc um, to to let people see sort of what that experience is like. And I do want to say um, that that we have had tremendous support and cooperation from everybody in the, in the tabletop game industry. Um, publishers have been, even before 
the show was proven to be something that was like good for everyone. Yeah. Um, we uh, we had so much support from publishers when they we would say so. We really like to play your game, and every publisher except one was like absolutely. And one publisher was like, oh, it's adorable that you have your little show. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then after the show was a hit, not they were like, not they, not, no, not that. So, so, but, but then, but then after, afterwards, they, the, 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 afterwards it was, uh, hey, so do you want to play our game? Like, no, we really don't. Sorry. <laughs>